Popping lights in Unreal Engine is a waste of time. You see, I have about 100 lights in this scene and I want to change the mood. Imagine going into each light one by one to change its color. It would be torture. If only I could make changes to one light and it would propagate to all the rest. Well, it's possible. You can take it to an extreme and copy it over 1000 times. You don't need to have any prior blueprints knowledge to use it. It will take you literally less than a minute to set up once you know what to do. Besides, it has no negative impact on performance compared to regular lights. So how can we avoid the torture of going each light one by one to change its settings like color? Well, we can't just copy the light because each new light will be completely independent from all other lights in the scene. We need to find some way for all of these lights to communicate with one another. So let's create a very simple blueprint. So simple in fact that we will do no scripting at least at this stage at all. Navigate to the content browser, pick a folder that you like and right click anywhere where it's empty and choose blueprint class. In here, we'll just go for an actor. Let's name it something like Blueprint Spotlight and double click to open it up. Don't worry if this window feels overwhelming. We only really need this section in here. Let's click on Add and search for Spotlight and click on it again. If we open the viewport in here, we will see that it just added a regular spotlight to our scene. Now let's place it anywhere we want in the viewport. I want, for example, something like this little bit higher, click compile and save. Now when I close this window and drag and drop it into our scene, instead of a simple light we got basically the same thing just inside of another actor. When we open it again and select the spotlight, we, you will see that the same window of details that we had for the regular spotlight has appeared in here. Let's make a few copies of this new light and see what it gave us. When we open it up again and in the details panel change any of the settings, let's change for example the color, you will see that the color changes for all of the lights that we copied. The same thing applies for the intensity, for example if you increase it, increase it for everyone, also a tonation radius, inner cone angle and, and all of the settings that are here in the list. You might ask what if I want this light to be blue while all the others to be orange. You can also do it with our light. First open the blueprint itself and here set the color for the default value. So as we said we wanted everyone to be orange. Now select the light that you want to have a specific color and in here under the details panel you will see the components of this blueprint. Select the spotlight component and change its light to blue. Now when I change the color from inside of the blueprint, it will propagate only to the lights you have not manually adjusted. However, other settings will as long as you didn't edit them too. So if I change the intensity in here for example, it will change it for all of the lights including the blue one. But what if you want to copy a lamp, a candle or a torch? Do we really have to place the mesh first and add the light manually every single time? Hell no. As you can see with this example, all of the elements the torch needs are grouped together and all of them appear every time I drag and drop it into the scene. All you have to do is just find the mesh you want, drop it onto the scene root. Now scale and place it so it sits properly. Now let's switch the light into a point light just because it makes more sense for the torch. I will change the units. I use candelas for this scene and set my intensity. Put the light somewhere where it kind of makes sense. Click compile and save. Now when we go back to the lights we have placed earlier, they all have been updated with a static mesh. The light was changed into a point light. For this particular torch I also used a Niagara fire effect from this pack that you can also get for free for personal use. Bonus tip, if your torch or a lamp has a flat side that connects to a wall or ceiling, attach the point light to the uh, mesh itself and then rotate the light so it attaches to the wall perfectly. Now every time you drag and drop it, it will snap perfectly. At this point you might be thinking, okay Leo, it's great and all, but what if I want all of these lights to be brighter than all of those ones? I remember I can change the same settings individually when I go into blueprint components, select the light itself and change it from here. But as soon as I select more than one, this menu completely goes away. Do I seriously have to select each one one by one just to adjust its brightness? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's level up our blueprint just a little bit and expose the parameter for the 
intensity. And here's the cool part, not only can you bulk edit them all at once, just like this, since you don't have to go and look for the spotlight, it's also more convenient to edit individual lights as well. Before we begin, I must warn you, we will go into blueprints just a little bit, but I promise you don't need any prior blueprints knowledge to get it running. And if it doesn't work for any reason, you can grab the finished light file from the top comment of the video and compare it to yours to see what went wrong. All right, let's open our light blueprint and see how we can get it done. In here, all I have is just a simple spotlight, nothing else. I will open the construction script and delete my logic so we can recreate it. As you remember, we wanted to expose the parameter for the intensity. For this, we need to create a variable. I want to do it manually first so you can understand what's going on. And later I'll show you a way how to speed up this step. Variables are displayed in here. We can click on this plus to add a new one. I will call it intensity new. The intensity in our case is just a number. And if you allow me a bold simplification, a number in real is just called a float. So let's change the variable type from here and select the float. At this stage, I want to set the default value, but as you can see, it asks us to compile the blueprint first. So let's do this from this button in here. Now it doesn't complain anymore. And I just want to copy the value we had in here. Let's compile, save. And as you can see, nothing changed here so far. If I search for intensity, I cannot find it. Now watch what happens when I click on this icon in here and click compile again. Suddenly the intensity appeared in the settings. At this stage, it does not affect anything because we didn't connect it to anything. So what I wanna do, I want to connect this variable with our intensity of the spotlight. And I need a reference for the spotlight. I can get it very easily by drag and dropping it into the canvas. Clicking and holding on this pin in here and dragging out this uh, octopus spaghetti thing. When you let go, a search will open up and we can search for set intensity in here. As you can see, a second pin appeared in here and whatever we connect to it will set the intensity of the target, which is our spotlight. So I'll drag and drop our variable into the canvas, let go and then choose get intensity new. I will connect it up, then I will get the construction script and connect it to the pin in here. If you don't see the construction script, just make sure you are not in the event graph, but in the construction script itself. It should always be in here. Now it's time to click compile go back to our viewport, select all of the lights you want to select, find our variable for the intensity again, and when we change it, now you can see it did affect the lights. At this stage, I would also create a folder for all of those lights that we have grouped together to have a higher intensity. So you can quickly select them all whenever you want to do any further adjustments. But are we limited only to intensity? Of course not. You can do the same thing with any parameter parameter you can see in this menu. You just need to be careful with the variable type. There is however a quick way to create those variables without ever choosing the type wrong. Let's see how on the example of light color. Let's select our reference to the spotlight again, drag out from the pin and search for set light color. This gave us a similar function to this one with a parameter for new light color. If you right click on it and choose promote to variable, it will create a new variable automatically and also select the right variable type. Now all we have to do is just to click compile once so the default value appears. I'll go to the spotlight and copy the sRGB value of our color, go to the variable and paste it in here. Now click on this eye icon again so we expose it, connect our pins together, click on compile, go back to the viewport, we will notice a new parameter in here and boom we can edit the color of the entire group instantly without ever touching the color of the other lights. It is particularly helpful to have only some parameters exposed because you can still bulk edit all of the technical stuff from one place for all of your lights. By the way, do you want to get your hands on this scene? Well, you can! This is a free pack from Megascans, which you can get on Fab. I made a video about how to drag and drop Megascans and other assets from Fab directly into your scene. Go watch it, subscribe and see you there!